Now, my guest who's on the phone, correct? Cool. Great. Uh, is a cornerback in the National Football League. He played college football for the Townsend Tigers. That's in Maryland. And was drafted by the Seattle Seahawks, one of my favorite teams, in the fifth round of the 2015 NFL Draft. He now plays for the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans used to be in, the, in the Houston. Used to be Houston Oilers. So, you know, I got like I got kind of like a feeling for Tennessee Titans, you know. Kind of like a, I'm balanced between I love, hate them. They kind of the old Oilers, but they the Texans. So, so I got a love-hate relationship with him already. <laughs> and uh, he's on the show to talk about staying focused and overcoming the odds in professional football. His program, Simple Greatness. Is a youth outreach company that focuses on the uplifting of the youth in our communities. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, Ty Smith. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, we are uh, Ty. What city are you calling me from? Uh, right now, I'm in Santa Cruz, California. I'm a, I'm out here training. Oh, oh so you're training? What's that? Uh, getting ready for what, what's that? Off, what's the office? Uh, OTAs. OTAs. Okay, I was. Uh, yes, <laughs> I had to get them. Had to get those three letters right because I messed them up the other day when I was interviewing a, another young man from the National Football League. I said PTO, so you started laughing at me. <laughs> 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 he said, "He's like, I can use those days, but uh, so does it ever stop? Does the training ever stop? It's year round, huh?" Here's, yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really year round. Um, but you just gotta, you gotta know when to rest your body, how to build it back up to uh, to get it ready for the season and all that. So it's, it's definitely year round. So the OTAs, that really is. I thought the OTAs is you're supposed to go to OTAs to get in shape and training. But you're saying that you have to train for the OTAs, and then the OTAs is to prepare you for preseason. And preceding this, prepare you for the football <laughs> season. Yeah, exactly. You really, uh, <laughs> really. Uh, when do you so rest, I, sir? When do you rest? <laughs> uh, you might, you might rest uh, of a year, a total of a year. You might rest for like a, a month. Uh huh. You might rest for a total of a month because right after the season, most guys take like you know a couple weeks off and do completely nothing, and they start right. back doing like little foundation stuff to build right. their foundation back up. Right. Okay. So, so what's a, what's a, what's an off season like for you? We're going to talk about the uh, the many programs you're involved, but I always like the people to know about you as an individual, and also the fact that you know you weren't you were not a high first round draft pick. You were not from one of those major uh, power five schools, and you've been successful in life. Uh, Townsend Tigers in Townsend, Maryland. How does a a young man from that school make it in the National Football League? Um. Really, just not not giving up, not uh, not quitting, um, just just pushing and understanding and believing that you know greater things are coming, especially to those who who work and put in the work. And um, for me, especially, you know, praying and staying in the word, and just just ultimately just believing that that greater things are coming. Now, you were drafted in the fifth round, so that's that's yeah. pretty, that's a pretty nice check. Fifth round, that's fifth round. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you went for a power school. Did they invite you to the uh, combine? Yeah, yeah, I got invited to the combine. That was key right there, getting invited to the combine, because you got to show off your speed, your agility, and all that stuff. That helped you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it helped. And then, so yeah. so to get there, and now, you, now, now you're with Seattle, and now you're with the Titans. So when you're with Seattle, how was that first experience when you came into the camp? You were... Your fifth round draft pick, you way up north. You know, you went from the east to the very west. So it was a, yeah. it was a total, total culture change. You have to admit, it was a culture change. Yeah. So how exactly. did you deal with that? You know, because your friends, you know, you need support. You need support. You need new teammates, and you. Uh, how did that work for you? Um, it ended up working out pretty well because of the team I went to. We had a a lot of veteran leadership. You know, especially in the, me being a DB, I had. Veteran leaders like uh, Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, and um, Cam. also our uh, yeah, so um, also our uh, player development guy Mo Kelly uh, out in Seattle. He was a big help in helping like the rookies and um, the other guys get adjusted to the to the new you know the new community and just the new uh, the business of the NFL. Not just uh, you know college and NFL is different because you know it's a business. When you come to the NFL. Well, the great thing about you going to Seattle, you got to see 
and be around some real personalities, people who speak yeah. their yeah. mind. You know, you know, Bennett, defensive lineman, you know, he real personality. You see Richard Simmons. Stanford grad, real personality. Earl Thomas, DB, had a, don't forget my man, the quarterback, real Russell, Russell yeah, Wilson. Russell. A lot of personality, wide receiver. Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett. All the these guys. Yeah. Did, that, did that help you to understand that you could have a, because you came into the, into the National Football League right at the, right at the Colin Kaepernick moment, and it kind of changed the whole perception of the, "Quote unquote black athlete in the National Football League." Am I am I saying that right, or am I, am I misstating something? Uh, can you explain that a little more? Meaning that you know we became outspoken. You know they were the, yeah. the, the protests, and I, I'm not mm-hmm. trying to put you on the spot. I'm just saying I'm just my perception of that. You know, before before that period, just play football, just play yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, exactly. no, you went out there, got that check, you got hurt, you complained. You know, you you would complain, but this time politics, I guess, socialism or uh, social, so the so the, the social climate that was happening in the streets came inside the stadium. Did that have mm-hmm. an effect on you? Or not saying, uh, not trying to put you on the spot, just saying that it did create a culture change in the uh, in the league, did it? Uh, yeah, I feel like it did. It, it just, um, I feel like that helped athletes speak out more yes, on on political issues and social issues and. And knowing that uh, we can use our platform to bring awareness and uh, change to to what we believe in and what we see out there, because you got to think about a lot of athletes come from those communities that that are being affected, you know, right. in a negative way, and they just want to bring light to they just want to bring light to the situation. Yeah, I like Ty. You Ty say, can you explain that a little bit more? So Ty's not going to just throw out a response on something. What you just say, brother? Look, I got a career. You ain't messing me up with this interview or have me say something yeah. wrong. The reason, I, the reason I brought that up because you're involved with the Habitats for Humanity and then your yeah, other sir. program. And these are really socially conscious programs. Like, Habitat, yeah. well, first of all, Habit, Habitat for Humanity, you have to work. Mm-hmm. That, that's not mm-hmm. something you just go around and just, just, just grin and take pictures. They, they're actually building homes, correct? Yeah, that's why uh, I, I, I'm... I love how to touch me, man, because it's more like you really put, you getting your hands dirty. Like you, you are there building the foundation, putting your hands on the house. And like you, you're there with the family who's going to live in the house. So, you know what I'm saying? You would wow. hand and hurt them building the house, uh, cutting wood, putting the doors up, nailing, nailing stuff on the roof. That's why I really like them because like, like I said, it's more of a hands-on thing. It's not just you just throwing money right. to a, uh, to a thing like you actually help and volunteer. And you know, that, I feel like that goes a long way. Okay, cool. Well, we'll be back with more with my man, Ty, um, cornerback, Tennessee Titans, uh, Habitat for Humanity, Simple Greatness, uh, guy who cares, guy who gives back. Hi, this is Sean McDonald. You're on the phone with uh, my next, my guest is a he's a cornerback uh, and then a philanthropist. He's in San Jose, California, right now, calling in because he's still training for the upcoming uh, OTAs for the Tennessee Titans. The uh, reason I got him on the show is to talk about his uh, his give back, his give back program, his give back to the community. He has a program called uh, Simple Greatness. It's a youth outreach company that focuses on the uplifting of the youth in our communities, uh, and also he does a lot of great work for the. Habitats for Humanity. That was uh, created by uh, former President Jimmy Carter out of Atlanta, Georgia. A uh, program I've always heard about, and you're one of the spokespersons. How did you become a spokesperson for that particular uh, franchise? Uh, I just became a spokesperson by, you know, first just becoming involved with it and and really and really seeing the genuineness in their uh, in their in their company, you know, and really seeing like how they take care of families, like. They don't just build the homes for the family. They have them take uh, classes just to learn how to, to how they gonna maintain the house, right? How to uh, how to you know do well with their finances for all that. And, like they really prep them for the place instead of just giving them the place. You know, that's important because you you you, know, you can give people something just because it's nice. Don't mean they can take care of it or know how to take care of it. And so, yeah. how many homes have you been uh, involved in, or how many families you've been involved in, and how many years? Uh, I've built, um, I've helped built like five homes, uh, and that's been over the past three years that I've been involved with them. Now, you just, you, you kind of like just casually said that five homes. 
I built it by. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've had I've had three homes built. I, I know you just don't. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm kind of you know you got me starting because you just say five homes. Five homes. <laughs> Five nah, because when I'm when I'm doing it, it's like I, because I mean, you're a football I'm player. Come on, stop, 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 stop. You are a football player. You don't have that big of a window to build homes, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> and you you taking your free time. And let, yeah. I want people to hear this, okay? He's already told us the schedule. About a month off, you finish playing football, then you got to get back ready for OTAs, and OTAs leads into preseason, and preseason leads into the professional season. And that, if you're fortunate, you're gonna play all the way to January. If you're going to Super Bowl, you're playing in February. And this man out here yeah. building homes <laughs> for people he don't even know. That's key. That's the real. I want people to understand that that you said, Rashad. I could easily just give away, give a check out. I could easily just, uh, you know, show up with a check. You know, when a big old check, they just write write a number on it. You go, hey, put it on social media. You've done your thing. But you've chosen to say, I want to be physically involved. I want to physically shake the people hands who I'm helping and also educate them to have a better means of understanding how they can be successful in life. Where did that, where did that value system come from? Uh, it comes, it comes from my, my parents, my mom and dad, you know, just, uh, the way they raised us, you know, it's always been giving. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of people that's out there doing worse than us. Like, you know, there's, um, people out there who need, who need help. And, you know, when we think that we're doing, doing bad, like there's always somebody out there that's doing worse, but they might they might have a happier spirit spirit, you know. Right. So now, it really came from my parents and my family. Awesome. Well I applaud them. Uh I applaud you for, for, for being the person that you are because like I said, what time of year do they do they pick a certain time of the year that they uh start construction or or when what time of year are these homes built? Because I'm sure they're not built during the winter time, right? No, nah, in the winter time they uh they work uh out of warehouse and they might you know build up the 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 frames of the house in the in the mm-hmm. warehouse and then uh, when it comes springtime that's when they actually go out there and uh, start constructing on the houses. They're always constructing on the houses, but like I said, in the winter time is when they're mainly in the warehouse doing the building. And then they they transfer that stuff to to the uh to the actual houses in the community the habitats for. Them. Humanity community of houses. Does, does, does do you want to get into that type of uh, lifestyle or co- business after you finish playing football, but construction uh, yeah. or home maintenance or you 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 developing the skill set and the mindset? Yeah, I see myself, uh, you know, um, trying to do something along the lines of uh, Steve Smith, where he uh, he takes homes and um, flips them. He provides them to single, single, okay. single mothers and single, you know, mm-hmm. single parents, and he he uh, lessens the rent for them to make it affordable for them. I could I could definitely see myself doing something along the lines of that. It's also with war also done. with a, a war done. Yeah, yeah. He he even built like a hundred fifty plus houses or something like that. And yeah, I definitely could see myself doing yeah, that. Yeah, one of the most famous homes he had was Deshaun Watson, starting yeah, quarterback yeah. for the Houston uh, Texans. So. That lets you know when you give back, you just know never know who you're affecting. You don't give yeah, that home. Exactly. That young man's not the starting quarterback or leading Clemson Tigers to a national championship over Alabama. So you know yeah. that the what might be considered small really does have a big impact on the people that you touch every day. Now tell us about Simple Greatness. Um, Simple Greatness was uh, originally just founded by me to describe me, just to describe uh my trials and tribulations and my adversities I went to. You know, although I was a, uh, I was drafted fifth round by Seattle, I was also cut, you know, cut by Seattle twice. And um, I had to go on the Redskins my second year. I was on the practice squad there. Then the year, uh, once I finished that year there, that's when I signed with the Titans. And I've been with the Titans the last two years, about to go on my third year. Um, I use that, like I said, to describe me knowing that you know, despite my adversities that I myself am, I'm going to keep pushing regardless of whatever I go through. Um, and the simple describes me as a person. I'm simple, and um, the greatness describes <laughs> what I what I what I'm striving for, but also what I already noticed in me. And I believe that's in everybody. Um, it's just about you trying to tap into it and trying to find that within yourself. Now, a lot of athletes do foundations. Uh, what is your foundation structure? Is it a friend? Is it a 
mother or father or your sister, brother, or relative? Who who runs your foundation? Uh, me, really. Me and uh, <laughs> yeah, fam, family, family and friends. I love but, this guy. Uh, I say me. mainly me because it, it was like I said, I can't, I can't describe it no better than me and how I go about life and how I go things. Well, you're kind of doing it anyway when you're talking about uh, the habitats for humanity. There are similarities, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to, I try to uh, connect with companies that I believe have the same value system as myself. Mm-hmm. And 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 that value system is what? Uh, it's, that value system, I would say, is a genuine care for people. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. It's not about it's about it's not about money. I know, uh, you know, in this world, a lot of people get lost in the money aspect, thinking that money and power, you know, saying it it'll lead you a long way. But I believe, like, like things value things like. You know, love, compassion, forgiveness, uh the thing the intangibles, you know, that, that we can't we can't really measure the the grit that's in people, you know, stuff like that. Well, you know, when when I look at uh we we I'm on the phone with Ty Smith, he's a cornerback for the Tennessee Titans, uh was in twenty fifteen, was drafted in the fifth round by the CLC Hawks. Like he just stated, you know, there was no guarantees. He got cut by Seattle, then he was on the practice squad for the Redskins. Then he got picked up by the Tennessee Titans. When you're going through those trials and tribulations, what runs through your mind? You're an athlete. You know, you have a short window. You're competing against other athletes. And like I say, you know, at Townsend, you're the fastest person on the team or maybe the strongest person on the team. Then you come to the NFL and you like, first you go to the combine, you go, wow. Then you go to the NFL, you go, wow, wow. So yeah. what keeps you uh, mentally motivated that you can win in that environment? Um, I wouldn't say I'm motivated. Cause that's, I feel like that's motivation. It's just the emotion that comes and goes. I'm just, I'm dedicated. Right. And that's what I'm dedicated to be the best that I know I can be. And like I said, I believe that I'll, I'll, I can be one of the best to ever play this game. And that's what I, that's what I put in day in and day out. Um, I, I, I cherish the small things like the training, the moments in training. And I feel like that those, those small things add up to bigger things down the line. Like when, when things do eventually turn my way and people see the player that I am be that I can be and will be, it will be accumulation of all the things that I've worked worked for for in terms of years back. It won't just be from the stuff I did, you know, up um right now. It'll be from the things I did years ago that people need to see. That's important. So um you're the spokesperson? For Habitats for Humanity, uh, your fantastic organization, Simple Greatness, like it's as simple as you. Greatness is what you can achieve, no matter what standards or, or more roadblocks or uh, uh, thoughts that people might have about what you can and cannot do. Um, do you have any uh, uh, so, uh, software, I mean, some uh, social media handles you want to throw out right quick, Ty, so we can get you building your brand? Yeah, uh, my my Instagram is Ty Smith, T-Y-E Smith, um, and my Twitter is Ty Smith. Um, C as in cat, B as in boy for cornerback. Yes, sir. And um, I also have a website. Um, it's simple with the letters G and S dot com, and people can go uh, read up about simple greatness and see the things that we that we have done and going to continue to do in the future. Appreciate you, my friend, Ty Smith, Tennessee Titans.